So in this video, I'm going to just do a quick run through on how to create a short, simple quiz. So I'm in my Google Drive. I'm going to go to New, More, Google Forms, and you'll see that there are uh, two choices, blank form and from a template. I'm just going to show you the blank form today. And today I'm going to create a safety quiz. So I'll type that in. And description, I'm going to put instructions. And one quick tip, once you create the title, if you go up here to where it says Untitled Form, you can just click there and it will automatically put it uh, your title there. So that's a nice little feature. All right, first question. Once you click in your first question, you'll see that you have some choices over here and you can choose which types of uh, questions you want to give. The most used types of questions are the multiple choice and check boxes. Multiple choice, you, they have to choose between one answer um, and check boxes, they can choose more than one. So I actually think multiple choice, you can choose more than one also. Before we do anything else, and lest I forget, we're gonna go up here to the spoke, click it, and we're going to um, make sure that we've got our settings created like we want. So since we're already in SAISD, um, we don't need to collect the email addresses because it will automatically do that for us and automatically restrict it to SAISD users. We can click limit to one response if we don't want the student to attempt um, to, to try again if they fail. In my case, the student has to uh, make 100 on the safety quiz in order to complete it, so I want them to be able to take it at least twice. But I do not want them to edit after they submit it, um, and I don't want them to see summary charts and text responses, so we're going to leave those unchecked. Under presentation, um, if you have a long quiz, you might want to have show progress bar there because that will help the student know how much longer they have. And you might want to also shuffle question order so that the student can't look on the, another comp uh, student's computer and copy from them. And if you want them to be able to take it again, this is where you would allow them to do that. You show link to submit another response. And you can actually put in a confirmation message here if you want. Okay. And then we'll go over the quizzes, and this is the most important part. This is where you actually make it a quiz. So you can um, decide if you want to release the grade immediately after each submission or later after manual review. And you can decide if you want the um, student to be able to see the missed questions, correct answers, and point values. So I am going to click off of correct answers because I want the student to have to go back and review the information in order to know what the correct answer is. So we'll click Save, and I'm ready to start actually putting in my questions. Before I start adding in my questions, I want to collect some more information from the students. So um, here, instead of multiple choice, we're going to make it short answers because I want the student's name. And here, I want to put last name and then create another one and make it first name. So I'll just click the duplicate here and rename that first name. I could have the student put first and last name up here, but I want to be able to um, sort the answers later um, by last name, or the quizzes by last name. And so putting the last name in a separate answer will um, allow me to do that. So next I'll go ahead and um, put my period number and you could go ahead and make that a multiple choice but I'm just going to have them do a short answer and then add another question and here's where I'll actually start the question so my first question is going to be a true false so I will go ahead and paste it here and now I need to give it some options. 
And it is a, even though it's true false, it is called a multiple choice on the form. And once I've done that, I will click on the answer key. So this is where I need to assign points and click which one is the answer. So in this case, it is true. So I'll click out of edit question. And that's basically how you create a question with the answer key. And you'll always want to make sure that you click required so that the student is required to answer this before um, leaving the exam. So I can do a duplicate if I want, or I can go ahead and create another new one. And in this case, I want to um, create an, uh, a true multiple choice. So I'll paste that in. And I've already got the my questions and answers ready to just copy and paste. I just feel it's much quicker that way. And all I have to do is click here and add option, and it automatic, automatically becomes option number two. Same here. Okay, so now I need to click answer key and click the correct answer. Make sure I've assigned points and then click out. So that's the basic way to create an answer or create a question on your quiz. Put in the question, put in the possible answers, click answer key, assign points, assign the correct answer. So and make it required. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my quiz and come back to it. All right, so now I have finished my quiz. I have several true, false, and multiple choice answer, uh, questions. If you look up here, you can see the different options that you have. We're not going to go over add-ons or color palette, but if you would like to see how the quiz looks from the student's end, you can click preview. and it will show you here what it looks like. And notice it opens in a new tab. I know I have a lot of tabs open. Um, you can look at responses, and right now you're still waiting for them. Once you have responses, you can either look at them here or you can actually create a spreadsheet. And you wanna create a new spreadsheet and click Create. So once your students start turning in their quiz, you will see this automatically populating. Now to actually assign this, if you're not assigning it through Google Classroom, you'll want to click on send. The, the most used ways of getting this out to students are going to be uh, by email or by the link. And unless you want to email a bunch of different copies, then I would suggests that you create a link and you just put your link on your um, Google Classroom or your blog or your website or whatever you're using. And I do like to shorten the URL and then go ahead and copy that. And I'm ready to just paste it wherever, wherever I need to paste it to um, get it to my students. If you want to, you can embed it in a web page but that's actually an advanced option. So normally I just suggest that teachers use the link. Okay, if you have any questions, please make sure you email me or come by and see me and I hope that helps.